In Houston, I'm John Herter. Tuesday, the 10th day in August, great as always to have you along, everybody. In a nutshell, From the Experts is a compressed virtual networking accelerator helping people across industries connect very quickly in a brief, moderated, interactive show format. It's like a TED Talk with interactive discussion. So what's in it for you? Well, the FTU promise, if all goes well, your curiosity spark, new ideas come to light, and you may have helped yourself and the other person solve a problem, make a connection, get to that opportunity faster. We know that networking has never been more important for our business. So folks, help me welcome guest experts Lawson Gao and John Lambert, founder and CEO from The Canon a community built for one purpose, helping innovators thrive. You can find more on their impressive backgrounds on LinkedIn, so be sure and connect with them when you get off this show. Hey guys, I had the pleasure of attending the Bayou Startup Showcase in person on the Canon West campus last week, and like we were talking as the show started, I had a blast. Met some old friends, made some new ones. I'm really glad I went. And I'm also really glad that the two of you could take a moment of your time to connect with us here on the FTE Network, go a little bit deeper on your journey, developing the next wave innovation ecosystem. So we're looking forward to learn, you know, what are you guys working on right now to create this digital enabled innovation community that actually works? Over to you. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, on behalf of Lawson, uh, thank you for having us. We are honored to be associated with experts. Um, we not often consider ourselves experts. In fact, I came out of public accounting where we weren't allowed to talk, call ourselves experts um, because somebody might uh, hold us to that. So uh, great to be with you today. Um, Lawson and I are going to spend a little bit of time kind of walking you through the background of the canon, a little bit about our story, um, in order to get to kind of what our big challenge is. And, and the cool part about our challenge is, even though from a specific perspective, it's unique to our world, and I think you'll understand that as we get into it, um, it's not unique to yours um, in, in terms of everybody, uh, everybody's kind of fighting the same battle as it relates to how do we connect with each other? How do we collaborate? Um, in, in, as, as the world evolves and changes, um, and especially in the, in the scenario where we're dealing with uh, a pandemic and, and all those things. So, um, so we'll jump into it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We've got a couple of slides for you just to kind of walk you through the, um, the process today. So I'll share this. I'm assuming everybody can see that. Good. Awesome. All right. Um, so I want to start out with kind of framing the challenge. So um, as you saw from the title of our, of our session, um, we call it how to create a digitally enabled innovation community that works. And, and the kind of the foundations to that are, are really this, the, the history of the canon. Um, we, we really started out um, in a, uh, from the perspective of helping the entrepreneurial community find what they needed. And, and as John said in the opening, kind of what do you need to, to be successful? So the Canon is, a, is really a startup to help startups. And, and we started here in Houston, uh, focused on bringing people together. And, and we've done a pretty good job of kind of creating physical uh, opportunities for collision and collaboration and, um, and, and are, are kind of growing in that regard. Um, the big challenge that we have is that we can't fit everybody that has a need from an entrepreneurial or innovation perspective into one of these buildings that I've got on my screen. Um, what we're dealing with is, is a community that's global. And uh, with the pace of the innovation game being as fast as it, as it is, with the size of the globe being what it is, and we're not changing that. And, and I did you a favor and didn't animate the uh, the uh, the COVID um, uh, image uh, to go around that. But with the barriers that we have around being able to connect with each other, um, it's become a, a real challenge for us to figure out how do we get. How do we move from helping these people, helping this community in a, from a physical sense and, and, and recreating those collisions and collaboration in a digital virtual environment? And so that's really the challenge we wanted to, to, to present to you today and talk a little bit about kind of how we got to where we are and, uh, and where we're going from here. Uh, and, and, and hopefully, because this will resonate, I am sure, um, you guys will have some feedback for us and we're looking forward to hear 
uh, from you on that. Before we jump into kind of a, a quick background, a synopsis of, of what the canon really is, um, I want to start with the answer to that question. You're going to see a lot of information around physical locations and physical sites. And part of you is going to say, well, these guys are kind of like a WeWork or a co-working space. And, and that's a means to an end for us. That's kind of what we do. We're going to talk a lot about technology as well, which is our kind of our digital community and that. And, and that's also a means to an end. It's, it's an enabler uh, of what we're trying to do. What the canon really is, is the community. And so if I plant a seed for you going into the conversation, it's really about all these people and how do we keep them connected and then help them find the next layer of people and the next and the next that they need in order to run their business, grow their business, design new solutions, come up with new answers, and, and essentially kind of in, keep that innovation ball rolling. So. So the best thing to do is to start with the guy that knows it the best, my friend Lawson Gal, the founder of the Canon, and I will throw it over to him to give you a little bit of a background uh, on kind of where we've come from, where we are, and then we'll go from there. Lawson. Thanks, John. The origin story of the Canon was that entrepreneurship is a team sport, that these purpose-built business incubators that surround entrepreneurs with all the tools and resources that they need to be successful were showing in cities uh, across the world to be really powerful drivers of the startup economy and really helpful environments for entrepreneurs to be in to connect to classes and speakers and programs and corporate partners and other entrepreneurs and service providers and investors and advisors and on and on everything you could imagine you'd want walking into one of these environments to, to be successful as an entrepreneur in their early stages. And for us, uh, we, we didn't see that in Houston and that was frustrating. So we, we launched our first location that we called the waiting room. Uh, it's, it's, <clears throat> this is a picture of it. It was not a, uh, a sexy space. It was a 20,000 square foot 1950s building uh, and we didn't have much money. So there was uh, a low budget field every inch of it, but it was one of the first of its kind in Houston. And so it, entrepreneurs were immediately attracted to it and it forced us to be uh, really smart about how can we make this a value adding environment to those entrepreneurs because they're not here for the, the polish and the poshness of the space. They, they wanna come for the benefit uh, that it brings them as they grow their company. So we were in this waiting room and the promise was, look, we're a startup too, let's grow together here and let's graduate into this larger, nicer space that we're uh, building out 35 yards from the waiting room. And it, that is the West Houston Cannon location that you see in the middle of your screen there. That's 120,000 square foot pipeline manufacturing warehouse that we've built to be uh, the, the workspace you've always wanted as a, as a creative and as an entrepreneur. And that was uh, met with a lot of support and, and cheerleading because finally entrepreneurs would say that we, we've got a place here in Houston that we can go to get connected to all these things rather than having to go to Austin and beyond and, and leaving the city in search of those resources and support and networks. And from there, we, we, we started expanding into more locations. We realized that you know, Houston is so sprawling that we really can't ask entrepreneurs from Galveston and Sugarland and Katy and Conroe and Pearland to come to one destination. What we really need is a network of programmatically connected hubs for entrepreneurs across the greater Houston area. And here's my great segue into John's section. Uh, and then COVID hit and our entire business model fell apart because it was based on density, collisions, interactions in person with people. And those things are always so, so valuable and will continue to be so. But as the lockdown happened, we had to think, how can we pivot as a business to survive, but also adapt to be able to continue to create those collisions, those connections, those networks, and to continue to support entrepreneurs with all of those resources and programs without being physically together. And so the big challenge for us over the past 18 months is that transition to physical and digital space. And, and I'll jump in and answer everybody's burning question. Um, yes, it is true. There are just 
literally pots of gold at the cannon. That rainbow um, was real. That picture is actually real. And so uh, anytime you want to stop by, you get a free pot of gold. That's uh, part of the part of the game. So nice. yeah, as Lawson said, one of the uh, one of the interesting learnings as we went through the COVID exercise and it was um, it kind of bridged all the way back to that first picture. Um, and I tell this to everybody I talk to, you know, that we have a lot of peers in the co-working space and um, you know, it was kind of our dialogue through through COVID was um, what in the world is going to happen to to, to co working locations and and for all intents and purposes, all of our peers basically said, hey, we, we've emptied out. And the structure of our uh, of our tenant structure is really to be as flexible as possible. So everybody that we have in our spaces is on a month to month basis. Startups aren't in a position where they're going to sign long term leases, right? So so. Everybody basically has a right to opt out at any point in time. And so the traditional co-working spaces emptied out because why in the world would I pay for a space that I couldn't use or wasn't comfortable with using? Um, our, our community was was vastly different than that. We Of course, we lost a few folks and, and our entire attention kind of shifted to how do we help the companies that are part of our community, um, you know, kind of survive this whole process. But we, we kind of bottomed out at about 70%, uh, meaning the majority of our community stuck around. And so the message there was, was, was a clear one to us. It was that what the Canon's doing is more than these cool looking physical spaces. It's, it's the building of the community and, and we've got people that want to be part of that process and, and receive benefit from being kind of associated with the Canon over and above the, the physical space that we offer up. And so it just reiterated our, our vision uh, around what, it, what, what our mission really was, was it, it's not really to provide cool workspace, it's to provide all the resources necessary for, for startups to, to be successful. And, and the other thing that happened in that same time frame was because our, you know, it, back in 2019 pre-COVID, we, we had started to recognize because of the number of queries we were getting from outside of Houston, unsolicited, um, for help, whether it was a city or a county or a state or a country, we, we've been contacted by all levels of government, as well as individual entrepreneurs who have kind of looked at what we're doing and said, hey, I need to be part of this. I don't have access to this in my current location, or I'm in a city or a county uh, or a location where we've kind of committed to innovation. We're not exactly sure what that means, but now we have to deliver it. And so, so we, we recognized at that point that we, we needed to be able to impact the community beyond the walls of these facilities that we were operating. And so, so that's really where really we launched in, which is, how do you take, and, and we ask this question of ourselves, and, and, and the answer is it, it hasn't been done. <laughs> and it's hard, start, hard to start with a question where you know the answer is, well, you're entering kind of virgin territory. But the, the, the real task was how do you replicate all of the synergies and intersections that are happening in these physical environments in a digital virtual environment? And and we all know what's out there from a social media perspective and what's happening there and what's of value and what's not. But, but our task was we've got to find a way to start creating some of the same energy in the digital virtual world that we, we've got kind of in-house in our physical locations. So we created a platform called Canon Connect. And Canon Connect is really our kind of, it's an iteration version two of what will no, no doubt be a hundred or more iterations of the platform. Um, you know, as Lawson said, we, we didn't have money when we were building our building up the kind of the physical presence from the very beginning. We were in the same situation from a digital perspective. And so, um, you know, you go through, do you build something or do you buy something or do you partner? Uh, we chose the partner path. And so we've got a fantastic partner with the with a company based in, in the UK that had done a significant amount of work from a community technology perspective. And so we've used them as the foundation to, to build Canon Connect. And what you'll see in the platform, and you see the bullet points on your screen there, um, is really just the opportunity for our members to come together in a digital platform to identify themselves 
and to provide information that, that helps kind of endear them or pull them into the overall ecosystem. So whether it's a startup who's looking for opportunities to raise funds or uh, somebody that's got a fantastic business idea but doesn't know where to go next and needs an advisor or a mentor. Um, or a business that's a little bit down the path and needs uh, legal services or financial services and is looking for a service provider that's already been vetted through that process. That's really what the platform is built to do. And you see in the list of things that are in there, we've acquired an equity crowdfunding platform that we've now integrated. So our companies have the ability to come and do, go, go through the crowdfunding process. Um, we've got all kinds of opportunities and discounts for our members. We've just kind of rolled out the process of, of being able to provide benefits, uh, health, medical, dental, um, life insurance benefits to not only Canon members, but to the companies uh, that are part of the Canon. And so um, we've had pretty good success. We launched in the fall of 2020. Um, so we kind of hit the accelerator during COVID to, to roll this out. Um, we've got about 725 individual members that represent about 475 companies right now. And we've got uh, what are 100 virtually only members. And by virtually only, those are people that are only connected to us um, through the digital platform. They're not in any of our physical spaces. Um, and so, so we've had pretty good early success in that process. Um, but the challenges that we're running into um, are, 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 are where we're at today and what we wanted to kind of throw at you guys. Um, you know, we've got the classic growing pains of, uh, of a new platform. Um, so we get some of the, the bumps and bruises of access control and those kind of things. But those have been really minimized because of the fact that we started with the partner. The real challenges have come with the fact that now we've introduced a new technology um, that's now competing with kind of the traditional technologies that are out there, the Slacks of the world, all the ones that you use for different things, LinkedIn and, and Slack and um, Instagram and, and Facebook and, and all of the other kind of traditional platforms that are out there, as well as the crunch spaces and the pitch books and the, and the other tools. And so there's a lot of noise in this space around where do I go to get what I'm looking for? Um, fortunately for us, more often than not, people are, that are, have a need in this space because they're entrepreneurs and startups, if they don't know somebody, they're Googling it. So we're, we're, we're a huge step up from that in that we've kind of curated the process and, and pulled things together. Um, but that's a that's a significant challenge for us. The, one of the other challenges is how do you recognize, it's easy in a facility um, like our this West Houston facility that I'm sitting in now, it, on a busy day, we've got between three and 400 people that are working in and out of the office spaces in this space. Very easy to kind of measure the activity and the collisions in that world. As soon as you move to a digital environment, it's very difficult to see what's going on and what some of the kind of what, what, what the benefits of, of, of that are uh, in that process. And so we're really looking for how do we create additional kind of collisions and intersections for the community inside of this digital platform. And that's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, um, um, you know, with, without some, some, uh, some special, some coddling and, and cajoling as part of the process. So, you know, our, our vision uh, and the roadmap of the platform um, includes a lot of different things. So we're working on how do you put kind of um, direct messaging in, into the platform so you can, create, connect those kind of connections? How do we integrate video conferencing? Um, how do we kind of uh, create chatbot support where, where people need help, they can get immediate responses? Um, you know, we're moving toward an investor portfolio management process where investors can manage their companies inside of the platform. So we got a, we got a, a, a pretty good vision around functionally where we want the solution to go. But what it really comes down to for us is it's, it's you know, more tools isn't really the answer. Where we think we need to go from, from this perspective is we almost have to think differently about the future of this social interaction process, right? We, we need to take the, you know, we could replicate LinkedIn and we'd have something that looked like LinkedIn for a very specific use case. 
you know, we could replicate the Slack model or leverage the Slack model, but it would have some components that we need, and but not all of them. So, so really what we're thinking through is, and, and what our real challenge is, what does the future of this process look like? How can we look at it differently um, and in a way that um, kind of reinvents uh, the process um, to, to draw people in to, to, to the environment? So I'll, that was a lot of words. I, I think I hit the time right, John, so I think we're okay on that front. Um, but um, I'll, I'll pause there to see if we've uh, we've got any questions. Yeah, we, we've got a question from David Mullins, who's a CEO of WFSU in um, Florida. He says, how and where are you currently promoting and marketing the digital and physical spaces? So we are, we, this, the whole adventure started in Houston. A majority of our brand recognition is in Houston. I think if you talk to anybody, even peripheral to the innovation space in Houston, they would know who the Canon is. Our exposure outside of Houston is really, at this point, limited to some very limited marketing that we just kicked off last month related to our digital community, nice. as well as a number of different cities that we've been working with on how can the Canon be part of that innovation process. Okay. So clearly there's a large effort around getting the word out in terms of what we have and what we're trying to do um, that we need to, to, to bridge toward um, on that front. So great question. So I've, uh, I see there's a lot of good connection uh, and communication, but not another question in the chat box. Anybody have something they want to bring up verbally for Lawson or John? We just had another question come in from Catherine. Um, Lawson and John, are the startups connected in the Canon clustered by industry? That's something we've wrestled with a lot as to whether we want to specialize and where we landed was for the most part canon locations uh all are populated with a variety of different uh sector stages industries um and we believe that that's where a lot of the magic happens when you get a bunch of people from different backgrounds under the same roof uh that being said we are launching the canon sports uh, a whole incubator space focused on sports media sports technology sports innovation activity uh, and we're opportunistically exploring other kind of like uh, sub communities and, and niche communities uh, to go deep uh, in, into one kind of uh, uh, affinity group or tribe. Of so that's one thing that the technology affords us the opportunity to do. We've got the capability to do what I called on the previous slide affinity groups, which is, which is exactly that. How can we find clusters or groupings of whether it's industry based or regionally based, whatever it happens to be, we can we can segment those groups, and you can be parts of, of multiple communities. Right. Um, so so that's a that's a great question. What, what's interesting on the other side of that equation is what, what we've seen in terms of intersections cross industry between oil and gas and people that you would never imagine being integrated or or have anything af affiliated with oil and gas, and those those folks becoming partners from a business perspective. Uh, you know, not not kind of predefining what those connections need to look like right. are, is very valuable as well. So another question following up is, well, how do you actually vet the services that you're providing? How do you know what people want and what's working? So, yeah, great question. So we um, obviously we started with kind of a foundational concept for what we wanted to do. As I mentioned, this is the platform you see now and pictures there is version two. Um, and version two is basically kind of redefined by our community. So we went out and, um, and our, essentially pulled our, our community members around what, what it was you needed the most. Um, and, and so, uh, and, and one of the pieces of feedback that we got was, hey, you've got a lot of great tools and content in this platform, but even though it's all consolidated, it's still difficult for me to find based on where I'm at in the evolution of my startup. And so we went through the process of creating five stages and then segmenting content so that people can self-identify, hey, here's where I'm at in the entrepreneurial journey, and here's where I can find information and, and content and tools that are appropriate for me. Okay, so I've got uh, this local compet sorry, local competition question. Uh, okay. Whether it's Ion, you know, Greentown Labs, you name them, you know them. Uh, you know, does Houston have the capability? This is kind of a local question. Uh, sure. Space for you and everybody else. 
Yeah, in fact, we, and we get posed with that quite, quite often. And the reality is there's such a significant need in this region that um, there, there could probably be three more of us and we still wouldn't meet that need. So we, we've taken a very collaborative approach. Um, you know, our, our vision is how do we help? Right. Well, and, and we're in this for the companies that we represent, those 475 companies that we're supporting. Yeah. To it. the extent our vision is how do we support them? And so if the you know the best thing for them is to work with one of the accelerators or to yeah. connect with somebody in one of the other communities, that's the best thing for them. That's what we want to enable to happen. And so and, and I, I guess secondly, in that regard, you know, we our vision goes beyond Houston, right? Yeah. We've got a role to play here and, and we're playing that role and we're excited about it. But right. the demand from all over the place. And when I went through city, county, state, country, we've got opportunities at every one of those levels to provide support and extend our community um, to be a, a global community. Okay. Most, most of the innovation effort that goes on today is very much city centric. Yeah. And so nobody's really thought through what happened, what would happen, what's the value of networking right. all that together. And that's with our digital solution, we see that as a benefit of I can connect Houston to Austin, to Dallas, to Oklahoma City, to Milwaukee, to St. Louis. And, and now I've got a, a networked um, <laughs> innovation community versus all these individual hubs okay. um, that feel you know, like they need to compete with I'm each gonna, other. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to give three questions and we're going to try, you're going to, we're going to try to get the answer to that and then move on to the next segment. So one of them is where do you want to grow digital versus physical? The next one is, Hey, you have the entrepreneurs on the can and connect. Uh, well, so how are they getting connected to the talent uh, to take their idea uh, and product to the next level? And then Andreas says, well, can you share a success story? Uh, you know, so we can't do all that, but give it a give it a thirty second shot, and then we're going to move on. Okay, I'm going to I'll do the first two, and then I'll leave Lawson to do the third one, and 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 he'll, he can pick whichever success story he wants to tell the story of. Um, so the the first one, the answer to the first question is um, digital is strategic, physical is opportunistic, um, and and we will continue to grow in physical spaces. Um, that's a longer sales cycle. That's a longer expansion cycle. But And so we think the need that we need to fill on the digital front will become a predecessor for the physical environment piece. Uh, remind me what the second question was real quick. Uh, so you have the entrepreneurs on Can and Connect. So how are they getting connected to the talent to take their idea to product? Oh, excellent. So yeah, so that's part of the service that we provide as the Can and in terms of we have an advisory network. Um, that essentially are providing advice and, and input to that process. A lot of those advisors become fractional uh, support resources for those startups. Um, and then the, the, the other key driver is into the investor community. So um, whether it's connecting with our corporate uh, uh, partners as well. So in the oil and gas space, as you can imagine here in Houston, we've got a lot of corporate partners. Shell has a, a group that operates out of our physical space, as does Chevron and Technique. And so we have the opportunity to create connections for small businesses and startups um, to those entities who've recognized I have no hope of doing this to myself. I need All right. to find out what's going on in the field. So, so. I, I, I'm now at the point, it's time for the FTE expert ask and give. Guys, you're ask and give. Okay, there it is. We'd love your feedback. Um, easy one. Um, and, and in return for that, obviously we'll give you access to Canon Connect. And I know everybody's busy. Um, and you're all just chomping at the bit to spend a week or two looking at our digital platform. But um, to the extent that you have an interest, uh, email Lawson or myself uh, with to the information we provided in the chat or after the fact, and we'll get you the links and the credentials to get in uh, to, to kind of see the platform. And then we'd love to hear what your feedback is. Thank you very much. Folks, today's show is brought to you by our underwriters. Arion, the full service project engineering and design firm, respected, trusted, highly valued by select industry energy clients. Porter Hedges, attorneys at law, the informed choice for complicated litigation in the energy business. Unique Ventures, the energy hybrid technology accelerator with a unique approach to venture capital. Interpoint, protecting what you care about most, people, profits, brand, and environment. Alliance Benefit Group, building retirement plans for your business that work. 
From the Experts is excited to announce new partnerships with the Canon and Ecosystems 2030. We're collaborating to bring our strengths into new, unique combinations that enhance your experience. More to come on that. So let's move to the group networking. Uh, John Lawson, uh, what do you say? Let's open the floor, get some feedback on the group. So folks, keep it brief. Be sure and introduce yourself uh, with your name and company before you share your comment. And by the way, you can also drop it into the chat. Today's question for the group, kind of what we've been leading up to, what are the elements of the perfect platform for collaboration and innovation that could encompass all the best tools that you've seen, used, or that you wanted? Anybody want to dive into that right away? I'll so, take a stab at it. Go for it. So I work with an industrial group that's uh, Gulf region, and we developed a mobile app that does virtual networking. So you can go and show on your phone the services that people list, and that way they're able to see what other people do. Um, so I had a guy that he was talking to the Port Arthur Port Director, fixing to spend $300 million. He's looking for a Marine contractor. He whips out this app and he gets a virtual introduction because he can phone call him or uh, email him right then and there off of that app. So that's bringing people together in a virtual way. And right. that's, that's the kind of thing that I was looking for out of this was right. how do you augment these virtual introductions? Now you can do the virtual introduction on an email with, you know, hello, Tom, this is Bill, he does X. Right. And I do a lot of that. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things. Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, what about, who's next? Uh, Scott Dozier. Yes, sir. Do you have anything to contribute? Well, I guess, um, you know, when you ask that question kind of about elements, um, it's exposure, it's trust, um, it's follow up, you know, because I kind of boiled it down to just sort of the, the true elements of any anything like this. We need innovation and you need um, contact. So it, it, it kind of goes back to basics in, in terms of blocking and tackling and being able to maintain contact. How you and I like what these guys are doing in the sense that they're trying to actually make connection, I believe. Um, and offering a space, uh, both physically and virtually, that allows for that connection and maybe some of that trust to build. And so that, that was kind of cool. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Joan Meissner, are you there? You're coming from real estate. What, what's your take on this? Natalia, do you have a take on this? Um, yes, I think uh, what I would add is that now, that now that you've had this platform for a while, I think it would be important to find out what people are using this platform for. So if you get the feedback from them, you may find out that they're using it to find connections. You might find out that they're using it to get courses, to get something else. And once you have that knowledge, it'll be very easy to tailor it going forward, especially now that it's growing. I think it'll be easier to move the resources to where the people need it the most. Cool. Thanks, Ben, and Natalia. And, 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 and fortunately for us, we, we've got full visibility on the back end of the platform as to how people are using the platform. And we've also uh, brought in a, an individual, uh, Amanda Moya, to, very specifically to kind of ask those questions and kind of track where we go with that so that we're sure that where we're going with the platform is where the community needs it to go, not necessarily where we think it needs to go. So thank you. Um. Christina Clovers, anything from your experience or uh, Jeff Hogan? Now? Yeah, there's lots of elements to collaboration. I think that Scott said it pretty well. I think that, you know, there's lots of things all these startup companies are looking for. I think you're hitting on a lot of them. They need real estate, they need resources, they need networking, they need hiring. I think it's great you're pulling all those things together. I think fundamentally, though, it comes down to the trust factor. How do you develop relationships and get to know people? And that's where the real knowledge transfer capital and things start to move in good directions. So uh, being physically present in there a couple of days a week with other people that you bump into, I think that's very powerful. There's other models 
here in Austin where they do kind of similar things. The Capital Factory, Techstar, dozens of them here in Austin do those same kinds of things. But I think that fundamentally it comes down to the things Scott mentioned, um, which is you know, how do you, there's lots of value that you guys are adding. And the question is, how do you build the trust? And it sounds like you're doing the right things to do that. So I think it's a cool model. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Alyssa, what about from your experience? Um, I feel like this networking online things and platforms, something that might be interesting, and I don't know how to execute this, will be a mapping of how different services re, uh, relate to the different innovators' needs. Does that make sense? I don't know. Um, you see a list, a directory of all these different companies' services, and how does that relate to your individual needs? For example, I'm with a video marketing company, but a lot of people don't know to find us because we're very specialized. We're not um, just a general marketing brand strategy people. Mm. But then at the same time, if you need HR related services, but uh, you go to one group and list, how do you know what element are essential to what your company needs, uh, IT related. So if kind of like organic mapping, things growing will be something interesting to me in this kind of platform, how that community kind of grow instead of just a list. So. Interesting. Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, Craig, you're coming from the shipbuilding side of things. What, what are you guys doing in this space? Craig, you still with us? Okay, well, let's move on. Anybody else have uh, something they want to add? Thomas, what's your take on uh, this piece? Well, I'm sitting here. Um, well, when Lawson first started with the Canon, we we had lunch and we had a really good chat about you know his vision of of, of taking Canon and of course with you know the black swan of the COVID. Um, People have transformed, correct? I mean, organizations have transformed into what we call the so-called hybrid model of digital versus physical space. Um, but I think there are so many platforms, correct? I mean, HX is doing a platform that try to connect startup with this. So for me, I think what is important for, for, for you guys, in fact, I, this is the first time I'm hearing about the connect. So maybe you need a real strong, program to just advertise and say, hey, this is what we deliver and then have it in a form of a matrix where you have um, what do you call it? Um, it verticals, industry verticals against your service offerings, correct? So then people can actually pick a box and say, hey, this is the box that I want. I'm in the medical industry and I need this aspect of it. So um, I think Lawson, just come up with some really kick-ass party, you know, a physical party and, and actually uh, sell this. I mean, because again, you know, if you try to do it, try to, how shall I say, sell a digital platform using uh, digital uh, marketing, it's going to be tough. I think you need to get people um, into the space. And the other thing is collaboration and, and, and having joint ventures, because again, having some KPIs that you can hang your hat off from let's say for example bringing a company in and seeing right through either they get funding or they get a pilot or you right. know get traction get people whatever but i thank think you. having that thank you very much thomas um uh shifting over pat hogan are you with us still pat comes from the utility world and i was curious if uh, uh he had a view on what they're doing in that segment pat you still there yeah, I am sorry, just not in the spot where I can talk. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, Tanika, welcome. Do you have any thoughts on this and uh, how this is impacting your business and what, your, what you would like to have in the innovation space? You gotta unmute yourself, sorry. I think I muted you on accident. I apologize. <laughs> Should be able to hear you. I can't hear you. Okay. Can there you hear we. me now? Yes. Okay. 
I have a, I have a microphone and I have the Zoom unmute. So um, <laughs> thanks for your question. I'm, I'm still kind of noodling over it. Um, you know, I guess being in this entrepreneurial space, obviously networking, you know, forms like this, you know, are helpful. And I'm actually trying to find like the right space because I'm inundated, <laughs> you know, with many different types of platforms. And I hear new ones, new pitches for them all of the time, mm-hmm. quite honestly. So um, I think someone else just mentioned like, you know, I think it was Alyssa just finding, I guess, the right one that's relevant for you. Obviously, something that's cloud based. Um, I, I, um, I sell pro- professional development, particularly brand professional development. And I use, you know, kind of like cloud-based platforms to do that. And I'm still, I guess, seeking the right platforms as well to, to meet the right folks. So on that, on this question, um, I don't know if, if I found the perfect collaboration tool to date. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Andreas, do you have anything to add? Thanks for uh, uh, yeah for the question, uh, John. I, I, I think I'm I'm uh, really learning a little bit more. I, I'm glad to hear that Shell is a corporate sponsor, and I certainly want to learn more from within my company, uh, especially in my new role. And uh, I, I think that the main idea that comes to my mind is if we want to solve the problems of today and tomorrow, we really uh, do not only need uh, some. Uh, what you want to call it, incubators and startups with the proper funding. I think we need to really to have a cross section of uh, entities and stakeholders, including policy and government. I mentioned here, of course, uh, of course, financing and of course uh, deployment and and, uh, and testing and, and application and piloting and customer interfacing, which all need to work together, uh, especially if we want to achieve if we want to achieve the speeds that we we are hoping to get. So I wonder if, if the Canon can be visualized in that respect to bring a lot of the, the people on the right moment, of course, to solve the problem holistically. Right. So I, I think when you, when you use the term ecosystem a lot, and I think that's what you described there is it's, it, it's broader than just the, the, what, what you envision in the center. There's all kinds of extensions to that and it's how how do you orchestrate that whole process? Uh, and that's really our vision. That's that's what we want to accomplish um, is, is doing the right things at the right time. So that that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Andreas and John. And that's going to have to be the last word. Folks, how was the discussion and the networking today? The FTE post-show notes will hit your email in a little bit later this afternoon. Take the four-question survey and get your copy of all the attendees that joined the show today. You'll also find links to the Uh, on-demand videos and podcasts from previous shows. Good experience? Please share FTE with others that you want to network with. Forward newsletters and invite your connections to our events. If you know somebody or or if you want to be a guest expert just like Lawson and John, share a current challenge, experiment, get feedback, and or if you'd like to support FTE as an underwriter, please contact us. We're out of time, so be sure and come to our next events August 24th the challenge of attracting and retaining customers in this fast moving digital world. It's led by David Mullen, CEO of WFSU Public Media in Tallahassee. Learn what they're doing to solve the dilemma and find out uh, and share what you're doing. August 31st, Future of Technology mini series begins with leveraging virtual reality technology into immersive experience solutions. Led by Adipat Verdi, who's creative product lead for Facebook virtual reality. Sign up now by clicking on FTE.network. Thanks once again, Lawson, John, and Melissa from the Canon, and to all of you for making From the Experts the smartest 45 minutes of your day. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you next time.